Welcome Overholics to the Sales Call Overhaul. This is our 32nd episode, and today we have Carlos Redlick, who is a pretty cool copywriter. We've both known him for a little while now, and he's uh, more fun than we've told you about. So um, we're going to get right into it, but I want to make sure that I tell you about how to get the $1,100 Sales Call Overhaul giveaway. If you want your sales calls overhauled, then send in your sales call recording at salescalloverhaul.com or you can message our page at facebook.com slash salescalloverhaul. We will be giving away the $1,100 package right there and basically turning your sales calls into a closing machine. We give you a whole, basically a reference manual for your future calls. And it's not training, it is feedback on what you're already doing and how to improve your own sales calls. So that's how to get in. Facebook.com slash sales call overhaul message to change. And we will um, consider you to to win that $1,100 package. Next week, our guest is going to be Mike Samuels, who is a copywriter at Clients on Demand. Uh, which is pretty relevant to our kind of audience. Let us know who you want to hear as a guest, and we will take that under consideration. We always need guests. So um, we, we love the, the suggestions of the people we know who are relevant to our own audience. So that's the intro. Jason, will you take us away? Mike, yes, away. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Carl's here. Winning at everything. I love that name. <laughs> I, 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 I won't call Carlos a secret weapon because he he's been outed. I think <laughs> significantly, <laughs> he is the weapon of many a high ticket funnel for copywriting. And I always I, I enjoy following Carlos because you're going to see a lot of energy, a lot of humor, and uh, he's a very fast talker. I like the guy talk fast, but he leaves me in the dust. You do not talk fast, no. Jason. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. You think fast, though. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about basic human fears in high-ticket selling, and apparently there's ten of them that we're going to discuss here. That many? Okay. Well, I, don't, I know it's so many. I mean, how could we possibly keep track of that? I think we're going to dig into like a couple deeply, and uh, and get because then, then Carlos doesn't have to give away all of his secrets, right? You still got to go and hire him. Yeah, I think, something, right? I think uh, a good idea would be kind of just give you guys like a, an overview of what they are, and then we'll dive mm -hmm. into some of the more common Perfect. ones really dive okay. in, that you really tackle, you know? Okay. Well, let's start off with, with service providers that you run into, other copywriters, ad people maybe. What fear do you think that they have about unwillingness to price their offer at a high ticket level? Where does that stem from? What could they do to change that? Well, one of the things that um, prevented, I mean, I don't know what, what holds them back necessarily, but one of the things that held me back when I was first starting is I just couldn't afford paying someone 10 grand. So why would someone pay me 10 grand, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just an internal thing. I had never seen that kind of money, let alone 10 grand. Shoot, I hadn't even seen three grand a month uh, back in the day. So to think that someone would pay me that much for, for me, it's copy, maybe for someone else, it's web design, whatever it might be. A lot of it just stems from your own lack of money. And you kind of just got to get past that. Dan Kennedy, really everybody should know who Dan Kennedy is. Uh, he had something that was really, that really stuck with me. You know, was, you are not your customer. And that's totally true. We attract the type of people that we want, but that doesn't mean that they're the same as us. Many times, at least in my case, the way I got to six figures a year in revenue was by hanging out with seven and eight figure people. I figured out you can't, you just can't go broke hanging out with people who are higher up than you in, in the money chain or whatever. It's just like they bring, you, you are more likely to get risen up than to bring them down, right? Um, but anyway, so, so back to your question, I think the number one thing that really holds folks back from charging what they want is they're just stuck in their own head that they couldn't afford it. So maybe they don't feel valuable enough and, and they just kind of got to get over that really. Once you get your first sale, you're like, holy moly, like people really do pay me for this. Maybe I can do it again and again. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. The, that first win is a big deal. That's a huge deal for just about everybody I've talked to. Oh yeah. I mean, when I made my first $60 per email, I mean, putting this person, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm charging about 300 bucks an email. Now when I right. was 60 bucks an email, I had gotten, I think I closed somebody for like four emails. I think it was my buddy Constantino's, one of my first uh, clients. Mm -hmm. And Kalulis? Constantino, yeah, he Constantino's Kaluli. I always screw up his yeah. last name. Yeah, um, he's awesome. 
Yeah, he's a really cool dude. He, well, he was one of my first clients, and it's so funny because he, to me, he was almost like a, a faraway mentor, even though he hired me because yeah. I, saw, I think he was a year. He, he obviously still is, right? He's a year or so younger than me, and I'm like, man, this guy is crushing it. He's, you know, yeah. he's all these things, and and so when I tried closing him on like a, a sixty dollar or eighty, it was so cheap. I was like, hey, so you think you'll be able to take care of this today? And he's like. Yeah, man, you know, don't break the bank for me. I'll pay your hundred dollar fee. You know? <laughs> and so for, for that, I for me, I was like this big pressured call just to close a few hundred bucks. And for him, it was like, dude, let's just get this over with. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal. Right. So it was just that was just a little shift point for me where I'm like, okay, I again, it's another, it's another thing to to prove that concept. You're not your customer, right? This guy was about the same age as me in another country, which I just as a silly American thought, wow, they're so poor in Greece. He's no way he could afford my services. All this nonsense. I had fed myself. <laughs> yep. This guy was a multi seven figure earner. He yep. talked with political heads of the country. This is yep. the person I want to do business with. So, right. I mean, yeah, that's, hopefully that answers the question a little bit. And that happens <laughs> at every level, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not just that first time. It's once once you start looking for your perfect client in this, in that, in the other, it happens each time you move up, each time you reprice, you find, oh, this was not as big of a deal as I thought it was to them. Right. But boy, that was a lot of fun of a big deal for me. It's so true. And one of the things that really helped me just kind of uh, cause I wasn't, I didn't know how to get around all these people who were wealthy. Like why in my head, again, it was just like, why would they want to hang out with me? And I'm not yeah. making any money. Right. And once I closed like my first client, my, my well, Constantino's essentially, I was always trying to get him to introduce me to his friends, like uh -huh. he, Frank Kern, or I guess he knows Frank Kern. He knows all these people. I never met them, but every right. single client I, I, even to this day, do business with. My goal is to get into their circle. My buddy Scott, I, I'm going to screw his name, it's Dole off or Dole. He's got a he's got like a forty five hundred square foot house here, a lake house here. He's got a, he's crushing it. And so mm -hmm. what I want to do, and, I, and I'm always open with my clients, but I'm like, dude, you're crushing it. I want to get to your level. Can I just go like? Why don't, I, why don't we mastermind at your mansion for like two days? I'll just pay my own way. I'll go and let's do it. Because what that does, every time I've done, almost every time I've done that, I mm -hmm. I'll just take a couple hundred bucks because it's it's not it's not expensive to fly, right? Yeah. So if you've already got a client there that's paid you a, a few bucks, you say, hey, I'm going to fly there on my dime. You already paid me, so it's kind of on your dime. But on my dime, let's mastermind this. And what ends up happening almost every time is they'll have other marketers saying, hey, I've got my copywriter coming into town. Why don't we all just get together? And I suggest, I'm like, dude, why don't you get your friends? I'm sure you got other entrepreneurs there and stuff like that. Maybe I love we can that, man. Yeah. I don't even have to sell them. My entire yeah. thing is let me just give them so much content. Like, like, uh, <laughs> you guys talk i talk so fast i just give them so much crap they it's so much to take in they're just like mm -hmm. he knows his shit maybe we can just hire him or something <laughs> you know mm -hmm. but but getting in there and meeting those people that's just been revolutionary because now it's just more ingraining it, it's just ingraining look yeah people have money it, yeah. There's no fear in asking for it i just ask right. Scott, i'm like hey man you want to give me like he's paying me five grand a month on a retainer and he mm -hmm. hasn't used my services in like six months yeah. He just doesn't. He just likes to have a copywriter mm -hmm. just in case. He's like, "Hey, I need something right. on cool." So I was like, "Dude, you really don't use my services that much. I know you've got the money. Do you want to just shoot me thirty-five grand for the year, and then we just keep doing the same thing? Because mm -hmm. you're paying me all this money. Just give me thirty-five grand up front. It'll save you money. I'll have thirty-five yeah. grand up front, and right. it'll be all good. So right now he's buying his lake house. So he's like, "No, not now, but ask me in yeah. another couple months." So, yeah. so yeah, man. I mean, just gotta level up with your the people you're around, and it's. It, it's crazy. You can't be, you can't be broke and hang out with all those people. They just naturally mm -hmm. bring you up. You can be broken and hang out with them, but they will yep. naturally bring you up. I was just talking with a friend of mine uh, yesterday about that. He was talking about um, the. Uh, we we're talking about the. Uh, what do you call it? the? Your your the average. Your income is the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Hundred percent. Like that. I totally um, agree. Yeah, and um, he was he was looking at his the the friends that he had been hanging out with and it was his like boy i i'm not nearly as good friends with these people as i was before because we're not doing the same things anymore and um he's he's looking to really start leveling himself up and i said look just go hang out with this guy it will force you mm -hmm. to up your game 
hundred percent. Just by the third day, you will be up in your game so that he will let you keep hanging out with him. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's, it's such a great accountability method. If you know, you love this guy over here and you know, he's awesome and et cetera, then why not go hang out with them? They're going to, they're going to make you start doing the right stuff just by being there. You can be totally, I love that. And it's so true. I mean, you can literally be transparent about it. all the successful people I've met mm -hmm. who are way more successful than I am. Yeah. I, I mean, they are totally cool with you, you know, leeching off of them as long as you're transparent. What I mean by yeah. that is saying, Hey man, I know you're busy. I know we're doing this funnel. I, I always structure it like I'm going to fly there because it's the ultimate uh -huh. thing. Like I'm going to go from here all the way over there. Even if, even though it's only going to cost me 200 bucks, 300 bucks like for a plane ticket, it's not that bad, but you yeah. say, Hey, I want to go there. Let's mastermind. Let's get this thing done. It shows so many things. It shows you got drive. It shows you're not just there for the initial five grand or 10 grand mm -hmm. or whatever. And what it does is it future paces all this future business because what other copywriter, what other web designer, what other sales guy says, Hey, thanks for this great money. I'm going to take some of that money and go and do like this extra step to meet you. You don't yeah. have to do that. Like I know plenty of people who are literally making millions of dollars doing lead generation for a law firms and a bunch of other different companies. They've never met their people. That's cool. You can do that. Um, but but for when you can go above and beyond, it <laughs> really stands out. Um, the, go ahead. I'm this, sorry. Is, this is another reason why we tell people to raise their prices. It's one of the things we very consistently tell people to do is so that you can afford to go above and beyond. Mm -hmm. 100%. It, when you're charging 60 bucks per email, you cannot afford to buy a plane ticket. It's nope. not even covered in that kind of price. Nope. When you're charging five or $10,000 up front, yeah, you can do anything you want now. You can give whatever level of service you want and it lets you keep those better clients it lets you get more better clients like that there are just so many reasons to be priced in the in the range where you have profit built in or you have actual profit built in um and once you surround yourself with yeah. all these people it's just easier to close that like yeah uh, like they don't mind like let me actually give you a great example it's, it's happening as we speak hopefully mm -hmm. it's finalized today so i'm mm -hmm. i was in the market to go buy a corvette like a z06 like tricked out awesome it, right and mm -hmm. then my buddy robert nava who's got he tricked out his corvette it, for, mm -hmm. it was like a hundred twenty thousand dollar car like that's how much uh -huh. he can do it and he only owes about 45 grand and we're good friends. We, we've done uh, little partnerships here and there on some online market. Like nobody knows we work together, but we do. And he's about to get a Bentley and he's like, well, I don't want to have a mm -hmm. bet. I want to get a Bentley. So he's like, do you want to just yeah. want to just pay off the 45 grand and then you can just have the Corvette free and clear. I won't even. <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. And so I'm like, Oh my God. And, and this is the type yeah. of shit that wouldn't normally, you can't do that with your friend. Right. Like, grand a year but when you're right. with a million dollar felon who wants to get his bentley the money yeah. isn't the issue he doesn't care about making 10 grand on a corvette he's got yeah. his shit he's trying to make millions of dollars with like yeah he'd rather, and again it's like cherishing the, the friendship the relationship we've got a really cool business partnership but yeah. how much more like how much more do you think i'm willing to do now that he's given me a hundred twenty thousand dollar car for 45 grand i'm yeah. willing to do a, like a lot of stuff for this guy yeah, right? yeah. And, there's so I, want, I want to call something out here um, yeah. for, for everybody that is still stuck and, and there are an awful lot of people there that are stuck in the, well, I don't want to be a mercenary. I don't, I don't want to make relationships for the sake of money. That is not what we're talking about here. Don't get stuck on that. These relationships, yes, they will make you tons and tons of money. Yes. But it's... <laughs> It's way more about the goals that you have matching up with these people mm -hmm. and the attitudes that these folks have that hanging out with them, they make for really good friends. Mm -hmm. Successful people make for good friends. That's just kind of how it works. Maybe not in Hollywood. Okay. I mean, there, there's some industries where it's extremely competitive and there are certain taste makers that rule the world and everybody has to suck up to them. But that's not how the real world works. Hollywood is a fantasy land. So <laughs> don't get caught up in that kind of thinking where there's a certain, you're trying to get your own piece of the pie. These are expert bakers that you're going to talk with. You're, you're baking lots and lots of pies with these folks. So, and it, and it just carries over into every area of life. I found most of my most rewarding relationships have been with more successful people than me. 
Um, and it's not because I want them to do me a favor. It's because, boy, we think alike. And I deserve to hang out with that kind of person and think with them and enjoy their company and et cetera. A hundred percent. I mean, some of the best advice that I get are from people who are already successful or when I say successful, like my buddy, Anthony Powell, he's made hundreds of millions mm -hmm. of dollars, like taken mm -hmm. home. He's, he's probably doesn't have to work anymore, but he's still, he's got a software company he's launching. He's mm -hmm. got a whole, he's got like three different companies he's doing. He's got yeah. a bunch of fun, all this stuff. And the reason I love hanging out with not just him, but other folks like entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they're so it, and I hate using the term winning, even though I say it all the time, because it <laughs> sounds like, it just sounds kind of douchey. But when I say winning, it's like, they're always on fire. Anthony doesn't have to yeah. work a day in his life again. And it, it, he doesn't, he just doesn't have to do it, but he's yeah. got shit going on. He's 45, 46. He's like, he's like, I still got a lot of time left. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he's going after his shit. And so I think one of the things that makes uh, that attractive isn't that you've got money. It's that you're always going, going, going. I mean, I'm friends with people yeah. who are making like 40 grand a year and they're not making anything, but they're just starting out in their entrepreneurial journey. And they've got this hustle and drive that they're willing to, man, I love that. I, yeah. I love that. I, I mean, yep. that type of passion and drive is sexy in a, in a partner that you want to date. And it's sexy mm -hmm. in a business relationship, because if you know that you're getting involved with someone that's like a go, go, go getter, that's why my, I mean, you have more confidence that you're going to succeed. My clients have told me that, dude, you're the only copier that flies out and does this shit. So I keep hiring you, even if the shit doesn't convert right away, because they know that I'm willing to put in that effort. And so that, I mean, that type of drive and push, I mean, that's what I think is attractive about hanging out with yeah. other entrepreneurs. It's, Hell, I'm going to start figuring out how to do that. I love that idea. Oh, it's great. It levels you up fast. It breaks, I mean, um, I, okay. So for example, like with the Corvette, it's not going to, I mean, especially with 45 grand, I, there's no way I could have bought his car for 120 grand. I, I'm just not at that level yet. That'd be stupid. But for 45 grand, I can do it. But I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to. It's, should I do it? Should I, I've never been the type of person who's been able to splurge. Well, I have recently, but I, I never, I'm not good at splurging. I still feel mm -hmm. like weird about it. I haven't trained myself to do that shit yet. Mm -hmm. and, I, and Anthony, the guy who's made hundreds of millions of dollars, he's like, dude, get the Corvette because it's going to do a couple things. It's going to put your back against the wall. You're not going to, you know, it's not going to put me in the hole that bad, right? But right. it's going to make me work to get that Corvette or pay that Corvette off. But another thing is I'm going to wake up every day, see the Corvette and love it. I'm going to be inspired. It's going to make me hustle and get, and I know that's exactly my personality. It's, mm -hmm. it just motivates you. So, uh, so that type of advice, I wouldn't hear that from someone who's making X amount of dollars per year at a job because they don't have this uh, limitless mindset of like, Hey, I can make a hundred million. I can make 10 million. I just need the right, the right vehicle, right? Maybe I need to be in a software. Maybe I need to be sell high ticket for another person who's a, like, there's so many ways of doing it. I know sales guys who are making 600, $800,000 a year, mm -hmm. just on the phone doing lead gen or not even lead gen, uh, their, their boss, the internet marketer guy, he generates a bunch of leads for 10,000, $5,000 programs. The guy gets on the phone, they're warm leads. He closes them. He gets 20% cut and he's making six, $800,000 a year doing mm -hmm. that. So, I mean, just leveling up with who you're around, gives you the opportunity not just to be a killer entrepreneur, but if any of us here on this call, we know enough people, I would think, that if we ever really got into a situation where, I mean, our back was against, oh, we couldn't make money on our own, I'm sure we have some client in the past that would hire us as an employee. I know I do. I know a lot yeah. of my clients would be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll hire you for 10 grand a month, that's a steal. Yeah. Yeah. But dude, fucking four years ago, 10 grand a month would have been like mind blowing to me. So. Yes. Leveling up that inner circle that you hang out with is definitely going to affect your income. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that takes care of question number one on our list. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, well, that also answered. That was fantastic. <laughs> I like how it was hanging around these, these um, leveled up people. It's kind of like reverse GPA. You know? it, just pulls, it keeps you pulled up. A GPA is easy to drop. That's so, true. Oh, this, this hmm. is this is it's easier to rise. The, the key thing for me too is um, when I see an example of how somebody's doing something, I can instantly copy it. I can instantly do yeah. that, right? And yeah. so I probably wouldn't get the idea on my own because I'm not creative in that way. But when I see it, I can go do it, and that is a huge advantage. And transferring it to whatever else, but just knowing that mm -hmm. this works, right. knowing that something works and having that evidence that it's working right there in front of it's inescapable when you put right. yourself around it all the time. Yeah. Well, that's what helps you. new entrepreneurs. They need to know that what they're doing is going to pay off. I mean, when I started my yeah. gym, 
I was paying 10 grand a month in overhead. I wasn't making money. I was losing. Mm. It was terrible. Yeah. And so I was in a dark place after a couple of years where I'm like, dude, I'm, this isn't, I'm not winning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm losing like real bad, you know? Right. Um, and it, so that desperate feeling for me, it only went away when I saw people who are in the same industry or similar industry really kicking ass. And I'm like, yeah. wow, there's, there's a pos. It's not that, you know, Jacksonville, Florida, where I was, and I started mm-hmm. my gym, wasn't, you know, the area to start a gym. That's not the answer. The mm-hmm. answer is market like some of these other people who are crushing it. And I didn't learn yeah. that until afterwards. Right. So, uh, Dude, I mean, just but, but all the information was there from the beginning. I mean, you could have gone on YouTube and found almost all the information that you've gotten from well, almost all these people. It's the evidence. It's the knowing that you can trust their information. Mm-hmm. That, that's what seems to make that's the difference to me. Is discernment. Yeah, and that's a yeah. that's an ability that people need to develop. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just inherently there. So that no, may account for the time taken <laughs> to, to get there. So yeah. let's move on then to the big question, because I think we could easily eat up the next 40 minutes talking about that. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about these 10 basic fears. Let's, let's kind of summarize those. Do what you want cool. there, Carlos. Definitely. So um, I actually don't even memorize these. I, I have them on my phone. I, so the, the key to these 10 fears is not that you're going to be a 10. And let me preframe it a little these fears are what you would attack, whether it's on the phone, on a in-person meeting, or what I do is generally on the phone and sales copy, right? So Mm -hmm. you generally just want to identify one of these things that your prospect might be feeling. If I'm doing something on the phone, I can listen to them and identify, okay, this person has the fear of embarrassment. That's why they want to get started. Or maybe this person has uh, the fear of illness. They, they're scared of getting some kind of disease, so they want to get this workout program, right? So mm-hmm. I, can, I, I can identify that a little easier on the phone. And so when I know that, I'm like, okay, it's easier to sell to them because I already, I already know what, they, what they're really, uh, their motivating factor is. Um, mm-hmm. When you're doing stuff on your sales funnels, on your emails and copywriting and stuff like that, you only want to choose one thing only one fear. And sometimes the reason why uh, people screw up online is because they choose the wrong fear. You think you need a prospect, but let's say somebody's, uh, and again, I'll go through all these fears so we know it, but uh, one of them is the fear of embarrassment, like what I was saying. So what if somebody isn't starting their make money online business um, to, because they're, they're embarrassed of how poor they are. Maybe they're doing it because they're scared of not having enough money to uh, pay for hospital bills for their life. Yeah. That's cool. That's actually a fear for someone else, which is one of the fears there. So not, so you yeah. want to pick one when you do stuff online just because you can't do all freaking 10 of them in stuff on, on a single page. You would just lose track. So mm-hmm. uh, just an overdraft. Let me pull them up here. Okay, so we've got uh, fear of the un... And I'm, I'll just run through these again real quick and this, so people can write it down or whatever, and then we'll just kind of identify a few of them. So uh, the first one is the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Second one is fear of embarrassment. The third one is the fear of failure, which is most common. Uh, Mm -hmm. Fourth one is fear of poverty and wanting what you can't have, right? Mm -hmm. Fear of loneliness, fear of poverty is actually, was a big motivating factor for me. That's, Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody wanted to sell me something on making money online, the, the fear of poverty is, is for me. That's, yeah, you know, we, we've watched your journey and, and you tell, you're really transparent with your story. You go into that kind of stuff a lot. Yeah, it's been an inspiration, kind of an Andrew Carnegie sort of approach. I appreciate it, man. And, and that's, I mean, it's, that's, that's why uh, there's a lot of commonalities within your market. Like if you really, yeah. which is why if that's a commonality, I don't know, I don't know how common that, I mean, I know that's common. Um, it's common with people who feel like they've come from nothing. That's it. It's very yeah. common with those folks. Yeah. So depending on who you're targeting, let's say on Facebook, which is why I love Facebook, mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff wouldn't work well without a good ad person, whether that's on Google or Facebook. Yeah. Or a lot of copywriters won't admit that, but I could write the most killer sales letter attacking the fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. The traffic person is targeting a different kind of demographic or a different type of person. It's not going to work, yeah. right? Um, Okay, so uh, just to kind of continue where I was, the fear of poverty, uh, we've got the fear of loneliness, which works really well in dating offers, as you can imagine. Uh, fear of dependence works very well when you're targeting women who might want to break out on their own and not be- I've never thought of that them. before. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Uh, we've got fear of betrayal. Mm-hmm. And again, relationship stuff, you can kind of classify sure. even issues, right? Uh, we've got fear of illness, fear of death, 
and fear for someone else. Um, well, let's, mm -hmm. so let's go with fear of illness. Like it, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a pretty common one. So fear of illness, um, when you're writing stuff in the, let's say the weight loss niche, right? And it really depends on, on, on which part of the weight loss niche, right? Because you have women who just yes. had a baby, then they're about 30, 35 that want to lose weight. Uh, then you, and so they wouldn't be for uh, the fear of illness necessarily. The fear of illness would maybe target a man who's about 45, 50 years old, gaining weight and is scared he's going to have a heart attack or diabetes or, or some, yeah. something is going to happen because it, it just naturally happens, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's a fear of illness. So that's something that you could attack in your copy, right? Mm -hmm. so if you guys hear a ding, it's because someone's coming on my site, which is a cool, which is why I love the little <laughs> ding. I can't mute it, so I don't know how to mute it. No worries. <laughs> Right. So um, we've got the fear of failure, which can uh, and we can, again, put this in different niches. It could be for a uh, fitness thing. It could be for uh, making money. Let's say you're a consultant. Fear of failure is actually something I deal with a lot with my clients because uh -huh. um, they'll say, hey, if I pay you ten thousand dollars to write this sales letter, that's a lot of money, dude. What if it doesn't work? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so are you going to leave me? There's a big fear right. of failure there. And so one of the things that I do is I, since I already know that I actually address it on the call before it comes up usually. And I'll mm -hmm. say, Listen, a lot of times, most of my clients have a big fear of, Hey, what if it doesn't convert? You just forked over 10 grand and now you're mm -hmm. out 10 grand. It's not working. The copier dipped to like Venezuela or something. You don't know where they are. Right. Mm -hmm. So to avoid that, what I like to do is we have three revisions. So basically a guarantee. So mm -hmm. uh, we run the traffic. Hopefully it converts right out the gate, but I'll be upfront with you. It doesn't always do that. And that's why I stick with you three more times to make sure it does convert. Does that yeah. make sense? And they say, yes, it makes sense. Right. And right. so what I've done is I've already addressed that fear of them failing and saying, Hey, what's the worst that's going to happen? You fail. Cool. I still stick with you. We're going to make it work. If you yeah. have to make this work though, on one shot, this isn't for you. Yeah. Not for you. No business is built in one shot. But if you can yeah. stick with me, we can hit this three, four times. I'll stick with you and we'll make it happen. Can we do it? And you just say, I mean, you're just very honest I and mean, you're just very yeah. and be real. Exactly. You can be, this is not sneaky stuff. This is not a subtle manipulation techniques. Right. This is open and transparent communication. And you're putting it right up front so that you can get to that issue before they even start worrying about it. You can diffuse the bomb before they even light it. 100%. And that's, it's a service to them. The yeah. last thing that you want to do is waste somebody's time, right? So right. if they're on the phone with you and you're talking about all of these things that you can do for them and, and all of these things they don't have to worry about, but they don't care about any of that. They have one major concern. Like yeah. with my car, the only concern these people had, it wasn't any down payment. It wasn't the monthly payment. None of that. I don't even test drive cars. Like my Camaro, I didn't test drive it. I, I wanted to buy it and then I wanted to drive it, right? Same mm -hmm. thing with they were like, oh, do you want to test drive your buddies? Because uh, we're taking it to a dealership to kind of make the whole process smooth. They're like, mm -hmm. do you want to uh, uh, test drive your buddy's car? I was like, no, I don't want to do shit until it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> but the- um, I want to uh, open the present yeah, already yeah. mine. Yeah. <laughs> like, God forbid this loan or this doesn't, nothing. Yep. No, mm. just when it's done, right? Yeah. Um, but shit, where was I going with this? Oh, the one, so they were talking about all these different things I didn't care about. If they mm -hmm. literally would have just said, listen, um, most of the people who come in here, they're worried about being stuck with two cars because you're buying a Corvette and you're hoping you can turn in your Camaro. So mm -hmm. this is why we like to solve this really easily. And here's how we do it. And if he would have said that, it would have been done. It would have been an easy close, but he yeah. didn't. Three yeah. hours to eventually get to this point, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. once you know these things, you can progress the sale a lot faster. The secret is you kind of have to know how to dig it out, especially when it's on the phone. So yeah. uh, one of the things I like to do is I, I pre-frame people as much as possible before we even get on. They generally know the price, they know the deadline, and now it's essentially, hey, let's see if it's a good fit and see if I'm even good for it. It may not be, right? But yeah. I know tons of copiers I can refer you to. And that's the secret I like to do because then I get them on the phone because they're like, well, yep. hey, I won't waste my time. He knows other copiers who may be cheaper or more expensive or whatever. Right. You know? um, but what I do to try and, uh, when I'm on the phone with them, I, I basically do this like investigation thing. I make them spill their guts two times. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's so funny. So uh, we have our preliminaries. Hey, thanks for having me on the call, blah, 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 blah. Um, so tell me a little bit more about what you're doing. I know you explained it a little bit on Facebook or on email, how we got started, but dig a little bit more into that. Let me hear it a little. I want to understand it. Then they go and they spill their guts. Business owners love talking about their stuff, right? So you let them spill it. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, look at me, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us, yeah. <laughs> so, so you make them spill their guts. And now mm -hmm. here's what's really important. Most people let them spill their guts. And now what's on, on, the, on the other person's side, they're like, well, I hope they're listening to me and not just a fucking salesman who's not like, yeah. so what I do is I uh, regurgitate what they say, right? And I do this twice. So the first time, make them smooth their guts. What's this about? We already talked about it a little bit, but tell me a little bit more. Okay, they tell me what it is. And I say, okay, perfect. So let me, before we go on any further, let me just make sure I'm following you and I'm crystal clear. Is that cool? And I get them to say, yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Yeah, thank, no one does that. Yeah, make sure you're crystal clear, please. Then, because I still remember it because they just said it. I regurgitate exactly <laughs> what they say. I say, okay, cool. So is, was that basically along the lines of what you were saying? Yeah, that is. Okay, cool. Now uh, let's dive in a little bit more on the email part. I, I basically just, it doesn't matter what part, but one part of what they just told me first, yeah. let's say they're like, I want to get a sales letter and I want to do an email campaign. I want to get thousands of people in. Okay, cool. So I kind of understand the sales letter stuff. Dive a little bit more into the emails. What's the strategy behind that? What do you want to do? Get them to spill their guts again. So they spill their guts. Another three, five minutes goes into this. They're just talking, talking, talking. And I say, okay, cool. Now let me recap that one more time if that's cool. I just want to make sure I'm totally clear. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So you basically just want to do bang, bang, bang. And I regurgitate it again. That's my second time. We've done this two times and I've shown that I'm actually listening to them, right? Mm -hmm. Twice. That I know exactly what they want. So yeah. after I confirm, like, so is that, you know, basically what you wanted? Is that, did I, did I uh, regurgitate that back to you, right? Like, yes, assuming that is, right? Um, they say, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Okay, cool. So based on what we were just talking about, I'm pretty sure the plan that we need to do is kind of like what we were talking about on Facebook with a few changes. Here's what I can do. You mind if I propose it to you? Oh yeah. Give it right. to me. I'm getting their permission every time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Propose it to me. Okay, cool. So I think we've got to do this type of funnel. We got to get people in for free. We got to upsell them with this. We've got to have five emails or whatever, whatever I think it needs to be. Right. And, uh, just like I said, on Facebook or on email, the total investment for this is going to be 10 grand. We start 50% up front, 50% afterwards, and it takes five weeks or less uh, to get it done. Now, mm -hmm. God forbid this doesn't convert. I mean, I always try to make everything convert first time, but if it doesn't convert, I stick with you three more times so that we can get it to convert. Does that kind yeah. of make sense? They say yes. Or if they sure. say yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. well, what part doesn't make sense? I want to make sure you're clear. And yeah. I just, I just answer the yeah. question. And they say, okay, that makes sense. Great. Um, so uh, the five weeks is good. The deadline is good. Yes. Okay, perfect. So how soon were you thinking of getting started with this? Did you want to get started sooner or is this like 10 months down the line? No, no, no. I'm trying to get started yesterday. Mm -hmm. Perfect. What's the best email to go ahead and send the PayPal invoice to? And I'll also send a breakdown of everything we discussed right now. They gave me that email. They're ready to close. Because I yeah. just said, what's the best email to send the PayPal invoice to? And I attached to that sentence everything that we talked about on the call. So they want to get both, right? So uh, they give me that email in my head. I'm like closed. Um, so they give me that email. I'll say, okay, perfect. So I'll go ahead and send this out now. Assuming uh, I send you everything that you like, the funnel, the funnel layout is exactly what you expected. How soon would you be willing to get started? Or when would you be willing to get started? Is this something you could do today or, or later on? No, no, I'd be willing to get started today, man. Like I said, I wanted to get started yesterday. I just need to make sure we hire the right person. Perfect, man. Well, hey, I appreciate your time. I'll go ahead and send this over in the next five, 10 minutes. And then if I don't hear from you by tomorrow, do you mind if I just shoot you a quick message just to check on the status? No, that's no problem. Awesome. Dude. You're the man. And also, I, I, I'm going to let you go. I don't want to keep you for too much longer. But assuming we crush it, do you think you'd be able to give me a really cool testimonial I could use in my advertising? Oh, yeah, of course. I would love it. Awesome, dude. Yeah, I don't that's the time to get those testimonials. Yeah. And then I pre-frame more. I say, okay, awesome, dude. And, and listen, I know you probably know like three or four people who are also internet marketers. You know, if I hand in my first draft of copy and you love it, I know it's before testing, but would you mind making a little post on your Facebook or maybe we can do a Facebook live together and give value. I'd love to give you like a referral fee of 20% just to get me a new business while we're still building out your business. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see, man. I mean, we'll, you know, let's see what happens as we go on. Hey man, no worries. I wouldn't expect you to do anything right now anyway. So I'll send you over that proposal. I'll send you over the invoice um, and we'll get started today. And if I don't hear from you um, by tomorrow, I'll just shoot you a message. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome, dude. Talk soon. Boom. Done. My close is done in like 20, 30 minutes, and they're all five, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar deals. But you right. have to know how to suck out what these people want. If they're if if when they're spilling their guts in the first or second spill your guts process, and they're saying, you know, I've hired five other copywriters, and it just I'm always a little worried, man, because it, it doesn't convert. It never converts, and they're always late, and they always have this shit to say, and blah blah blah. blah. Mm -hmm. 
okay, cool. So, and then when I regurgitate it, I, I totally, they tell me exactly how to sell them. They tell yeah. me all the pains, all the stuff they want, and I just regurgitate it back. And I do it a few times in little intervals so that they, as we're on the call, they know I haven't forgotten anything. It's little confirmations. Yes, 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 yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Did I regurgitate that right? Yes. Is this what you want? Yes. Can I send a proposal? Yeah. Yes. Right? Everything. Yeah. And that's, it, it, it's very easy, like you said, on a sales call to do that because they will simply tell you. All you have to do is ask and listen to their literal words. Don't yeah. translate what they're saying into some other, into your internal language. Leave right. it leave it in their language and you're good to go. You do the work on your end. You don't make them do the work of thinking like you, you think like them instead. Right. And good to go. Um, so I, I imagine that kind of process when they know the price before they get on the phone with you and you're going through that process and honestly listening to them and speaking their language back to them that you have a, a 70% plus close rate on that kind of stuff. 70, yeah. 80%, something I mean, I like that. Just made an offer. I mean, I'm still mm-hmm. running it now. We've got yeah. uh, 15 people we're trying to get for $7,500 where we build their funnel, do their copywriting emails, all yeah. this stuff. Uh, we've gotten four people uh, mm-hmm. so far and we had five appointments. Yeah. So, not bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like four out of five calls so far. It yeah. wasn't too bad. And, and the fifth call, the only reason it didn't go through is because he wanted to see if his friend, who I spoke to before, if his crushes it, then he wants to do it. I was like, all right. Yeah, cool. There you go. Yep. <laughs> That's fine. And I'm telling yeah. him all, I'm like, so, you know, what's the reason you're doing it so cheap? I'm like, man, I want to break 100K this month. That's, I mean, I'm being yeah. honest. I want to break 100K. The only way I can do that is if I deliver this much value for this much price. And that's yep. what I'm going to do, and then keep you on the long term. So you keep paying me 10K a month on a retainer, or you gave yep. me a or there's a long term business. Is that something you're open to? Every single right. person who me up on this deal wants a long term copywriter. No one wants a one person, you know. Yeah, that's, no that's a little them. scary, a, a one off copywriter. Yeah, you want that relationship. Yeah, you always, if you have a web designer, you have web design services, instead of building a website once, wouldn't it be cool if these people paid you a grand or two grand or three grand a month? Yeah. We'll have you as a backup just in case something happens. That's what I am for uh, Scott. He pays me five grand a month. I haven't done yeah. anything for him in months. And whenever he needs uh-huh. something, he's like, hey, Carlos, can you get this email? I'm like, yeah, done, done, yeah. right? So some people will pay just to have that security backup right. person right there. They can just, hey, I need this done, right? Yep. And that's, that's the power of those using those fears properly. This is not to manipulate people. This is to right. speak to them about what's bothering them. This is to answer people, not to manipulate people. And right. there, there, it's just, yeah, man, it's, it's so simple on the sales call as long as you're willing to listen. Yeah. So when you're going after those with copy, what do you have to do differently with copy than with sales? Uh, what do you mean? I'm not sure. For, for those like same two fears. Two you're you're talking about, you have to pick one to speak to, right. but what do you do to guess which one to speak to? Yeah, it's good. What, what's that guessing process? So, so there's a couple of places that I like to research. Uh, the main one, I actually saw this from Jay Abraham. So mm-hmm. uh, he had this Amazon trick to where you, if you, yeah. if you're in, uh, weight loss or something, I like using weight loss. It's like the easiest one. Sure. So weight loss, you type a book, you, you type in Amazon weight loss books. And then you look at mm-hmm. all the reviews that pop up and you look at the five star reviews and say, those are like your raving testimonials. Like, like, you know, was 500 pounds. Now I'm 150 pounds. Changed. Right. Off, right those are great intros or, or great stories to use throughout your copy yeah uh, it also gives you a good insight into what happens when they're successful and what they're thinking uh, yeah. so when you write your copy you say imagine three you know 30 days from now when you're feeling and then just insert what that person felt when they were happy right in that one uh yeah. five-star testimony or whatever um to figure out what pains though i look at uh, all the one and two star reviews and a lot mm-hmm. of the times those start saying uh, I bought every every DVD I, and and nothing seems to work. I, I bought this and it's not working. So they've got this this um, man. It's you can almost look at. It. I don't want to say it's a fear of failure because they're so used to it. It's fear of it could be fear of. Emba- I'm looking at my things. So this is what I do. I'll just pull it up. And so it'll say like fear of embarrassment. I look through and I start categorizing. All right, so mm-hmm. this person are they really embarrassed? Is that why they say, man, none of these are working? I must suck. Like mm-hmm. what's really, what are they really saying? So that's one of the things that I like to do uh, is just kind of go through like the Amazon reviews and, and they really tell you, like they spill their guts right there yeah. for you. Especially the people who hate the book, they'll give you like a 20 page essay on why that person sucks. So right. it's like, 
tons of market research, right? Yeah. Um, then another one, I actually didn't come up with this. I forget who who messaged me. They're like, hey, There's can nothing we new. <laughs> yeah, they were like, hey, can we do um, Google reviews too? Like if I'm looking to sell someone or, or something, can we look at that company's reviews on Google? Or I was like, mm-hmm. that's interesting. You can. I never really did that, but they were looking um, more for, I guess, local businesses. And then if, if a local yeah. business had a, a bunch of one-star reviews telling people, oh, this sucks about them, this sucks about them. Well, well now that's kind of a pain point you can try to market to that local business saying, hey, yeah. if your clients are saying this, this, and this, here's how you change that, right? So you can kind of do your right. – Right. And also looking at past okay. promos, looking at other promos that are that are supposed to be crushing it. If you've seen a mm-hmm. a, a diet advertorial or a, a make money advertorial or any kind of, um, it doesn't have to be a sales letter of a particular kind. A lot of these are almost like themes for copy. So if you see like Agora Financial or a lot of these guys, they use like doom and gloom theme. So maybe that's something that works for that industry. You don't have to guess so much. This company's a billion dollar company. They use doom mm-hmm. and gloom. Uh, I, I, even if I don't like it, it doesn't matter. My opinion is irrelevant. That's what we, we actually, <laughs> well, so we actually use that. I, I, I'm putting together a, what we won't do document for the, uh, like a mid funnel PDF download kind of thing. Yeah. And that's one of the things we will not work with apocalypse soon companies. Yeah. That's, that's just not our market. And I'm willing to forego any money that could come from that. So that's a line I'm willing to draw. Yeah. But if that's not like a personal line, like where you want to be in business, then yeah, use what works, use what right. works. And it, it when it's a personal preference kind of thing, so many entrepreneurs get hung up on this, especially in the heart centered entrepreneur space. Mm-hmm. Um, that, oh, it's, it doesn't express my innermost self the most. No, you pay $10,000 to not express your innermost self. Exactly. You are expressing the innermost self of your clients, of your prospects, and you're paying big money to get that done for you. 100%. So, yeah. That's a great. No, that's perfect. A lot of people need to make those lines. I personally don't have that line. I consider myself. Sure, yeah. So I, I'm fine with it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. If, we, we, would, we would be able to make good money in the, <laughs> um, in the CBD and hemp space right now if we were willing to just take the risk that the laws aren't going to change. I'm like, eh, I'll wait till the laws change before we get into that area. But it's a very interesting area. So that's like a personal preference, like a risk tolerance thing. I, what I like about it, though, is that you guys actually are clear on what you will or will oh, not yeah. do. Right? I think a lot of times when you're not clear on what you won't do, um, you can get sucked into a lot of shit that isn't really good for you. Um, yeah. got to be clear. Like, if you're like, well, I don't know if I'll, I mean, I don't really want to do drugs and stuff. Well, then maybe you'll do some uh-huh. cocaine later. You don't have a solid thing saying, hey, I'll never do fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this, this brings up an interesting idea that I've been thinking about for the last couple of days, and that's that AppSumo. Okay, dude, come on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to do it. That's right. <laughs> Oh, no apps, apps, Miami, a lot of people do that there. Say again, I'm sorry. I said no judgment. I'm from Miami. A lot of people do that. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um, it, it, there, there's a company called AppSumo, and a lot of people in our space know about them. Yeah. They run on fear. They run on fear of missing out. Mm-hmm. Is it, I mean, that's the core of their business. They run these limited time deals. They have very real scarcity, scarcity and urgency. And um, it, they're... <sighs> Whether or not you like their products, I bought plenty of deals from them, probably a dozen different deals from them. And I use some of them regularly and some of them not, but they're low priced enough where it's worth taking a shot. But they scare a lot of people into getting into a certain deal because that person does not have bright lines in what they'll do in their business. Mm -hmm. And so because you don't have a a clear line drawn, you're willing to go beyond your where your boundaries ought to be yeah and so uh, those boundaries can really relax a lot of fear and having having a provider talk about their own boundaries that is something that i've just started to explore in okay is this a way to eliminate fear on the part of the client when we talk about what we won't do um like if you have a funnel that talks about limited seating on an auto webinar, I will insist you remove that before we start that, that kind of thing. They know where our boundaries are and they know what our ethics are like. So they know that they don't have to worry about other similar types of things popping up. Um, 
but that this is new to me. I haven't been thinking this way before. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. You know, Gene Schwartz, uh, famous mm -hmm. copywriter, famous marketer had something yeah. called market sophistication. And right. I may actually be explaining this wrong, but here's how I understood it. It's a very complex book, way smarter than me. <laughs> Fucking after skimming it, here's what I got. Right. Um, it was the market sophistication. Like, it, if we're doing this doom and gloom stuff, let's say, uh -huh. uh, the that and that's working right now and it's crushing. Yeah. Cool. But what ends up happening is you run that for a long time, and then your your market becomes so sophisticated. Oh, that's a marketing tactic. Yeah, that's they get desensitized to that certain exactly. thing. They get bored with it. Mm -hmm. And so the more sophisticated the, they are, what I've noticed is the more transparent you want to be. So when I sell my stuff, I tell them yeah. very clearly, like on my sales page, I tell them, here's what you're getting. Here's what it is. You may not be a good fit if you sell scam product, if you do this, if you yeah. do that. And it's just very transparent. And you've mm -hmm. got to have a hook. You've got to have a good story. It's got to be sexy yeah. for people to be compelled enough to read it. But that doesn't mean you've got to lie and fudge. Um, yeah. Like like one of the things that's uh, so far, it's, it seems to be getting uh, people to read my copy. It's cool. If you guys use, um, I'm sure you do, like those, like Hot Jar or I use Lucky Orange or something. Oh, right, right. We're doing on the page. I love that stuff. So mm -hmm. most people on my page are there for between three and six minutes. And the people who actually, like the five people who requested uh, to get on a call, they were on there for 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. This is the fact that they, and a lot of the people are actually reading from top to, or what they'll do is they'll scroll the whole thing and then they'll start reading in sections or, yeah. or almost top to bottom. Um, so what's interesting is uh, you have to have something that's going to hook them. You just have mm -hmm. to. And a lot of times people are like, oh, but maybe that's too hypey or that's that's not aligned with me. And that, but you've got to meet them where they are. Like you've got yeah. to hook them in. You, you can't just say, here's my $7,500 offer. It's just probably not going to work as well. But if you yeah. hook them in with, you know, copywriters are going to hate me for revealing this. All right. Yeah. Let's see the bullshit here. That's what uh -huh. they're saying. Good. Yeah. Keep, yeah. Reading, keep reading yeah. my bullshit. And then let me... Sure. Let me Right. As long as you keep reading. As as you yep. keep, and then we get, you know, transparent, 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 identifying pro all the things that go into copy. Mm -hmm. But my sales page, it's pretty straightforward. You know the price, yeah. you know the deadline, you know what you're getting. There is zero yeah. hiding on that page. So that's why four out of five closed because when they got on, they knew everything. The only exactly. thing they knew is, is this person for real? Is he just another internet scammy dude who like, I yeah. don't know whatever, just had a, a bookstore job and now he's a fucking consultant. Like who yeah. is this person, right? So, um, so yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great example of how marketing should be integrated with sales. They are not standalone things. They need to work together and, and they both need to be aimed in the same direction the whole way through. 100%. And, and that page is... Yes. Uh, oh, page? Copy. Yeah, go ahead, Carlos. Tell us, tell us the page. Tell her. <laughs> Do you guys want to check it out and give me $7,500? Right. <laughs> CopyPasteTemplates.com slash steal of a deal. So CopyPasteTemplates.com slash steal of a deal. Awesome. So check it out. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Yeah. There now. Stop right. watching this podcast and go watch there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've actually, uh, well, not to do that, watch this podcast. Um, but on that page, even if you didn't want to buy it, I have a, an hour long presentation that I did in uh, San Diego that was for a bunch of marketers. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's a bunch of content on there. And I'm sure that's why a lot of people go. They probably don't even care about my offer. They just want to see that shit, which is fine. Sure. That's why I put it on there. Maybe yeah. if you guys will trickle down to the bottom and buy. <laughs> if, yeah, if they stay longer than six minutes, then you know you've pretty much got them at this point. Yeah, well, it, it's five, funny. five data points is enough to make any decision, right? Right. Well, and it's funny because <laughs> a lot of the stuff that I did on that page was so that I could build credibility. Because I'm like, I'm charging yeah. five hundred bucks. I mean, I, I gotta, they gotta know something. So I was like, how yeah. can I demonstrate credibility? Oh, I can say all the clients I worked with. That's cool. But it's like, they got to feel it, 7,500 bucks. And I was like, why don't I just put a presentation that I did up there? Even if you didn't yeah. do anything uh, in front of an audience, what I would highly suggest for anybody is even, I mean, do one just standing up in, in your office, you know? It doesn't have to be on a yeah. stage or something. But just doing that stuff, people people will smell the bullshit. And if you don't have right. the bullshit, they're going to smell the, the the possible confidence and the possible victory they're going to have yeah. with you. So you want to put that stuff on there. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. So Jason had a question written down about the worst copywriting experience. 
Hmm. Um, I wasn't sure if we had time to ask that, but sure. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to ask that, but I'd love to put a twist on that. Okay. okay. Um, I'd love to hear a story about the worst copywriting experience you've had by not dealing with the 10 fears at the appropriate time. Like the way some kind of a fear created a bad experience with you and a client. The, so my worst experience uh, is it isn't necessarily linked to because I used those fears to close the deal. Okay. The deal didn't work out how it should have, and it's okay. fault. So I'll explain that. So okay. we closed this person on about twenty thousand dollars worth of work. Mm -hmm. The person who I was working with at the time, another guy, really cool, um, writes incredible copy. The thing is. He's always late. He's mm -hmm. a typical copywriter. He's always late. Writes award-winning right. shit, but it'll be fucking four weeks late. Long right. story short, um, we were months late because of this mm. issue, and I had delivered everything I needed to deliver in ASAP. Done, done, done. Yeah, kind of like it really screwed it up because we were partnered up on it, and even though I was like, "It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's my fault," because I closed yeah. the deal with right. both of us, and he fucked up and fucked up my rep for that deal. So because that's that's literally the worst thing. It's two clients, unbelievable uh, in regards to them paying us up front, uh, yeah. unbelievable in letting us have this time to try and, and, and work the copy, do the copy, mm -hmm. um, really had incredible patience. And because of our, fu it's our fuck up, um, Law, I mean, the deal was done. It didn't go, it, they didn't get, in my opinion, they didn't get like the, the experience I wanted them to have. I wanted them to be like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, shit. You know, that's usually what happens. And since that right. didn't happen, I mean, this happened maybe a year ago and it's still like, it bothers me inside because those are the two people. If I ever saw them in person, I'd feel bad. I'd be like, fuck, I can't even look at you in the eye because it's our fault. We fucked up, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't like that. That's, that was my experience. And because of that, I've learned that I take full control over every single client I close, whether I'm with a partner or not a partner. Yeah. And I put specific deadlines. If that, I mean, it doesn't, so I took that. That was my fault. That's, I fucked up. I closed the deal. You uh, have to. Yeah. And whatever. But the, yeah. because I, yeah, exactly. You have to, because yeah. if I didn't take responsibility, I'm like, I can't even learn from this. There's no benefit. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Know, <laughs> Been there, man. Been there. Yeah. So, so anyway, that, that would be my worst experience. It was, I don't even mm. know if it converted. I don't even know if they tested the copy. It was the fact that it was mm. so late. It was damn near a year almost before they even got everything done. And it just, uh -huh. it was unex. I would have been pissed. I would have wanted to fuck me up. So I don't like that feeling. But it's, it still <laughs> speaks to the 10 basic fears though. Right. I right. mean, in, in your audience, how, what, what fear would you say that experience speaks to? Oh. Uh, Man, let's pull them up. There's out, out of the tent, yeah. <laughs> so there's a fear of the unknown because who knows when yeah. the hell Poppy's going to come here. Do right, <laughs> right. And he disappeared. It's like, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Um, fear of embarrassment that you got taken by a copywriter. That is an interesting twist on the fear of embarrassment. It's yeah. that I had bad judgment. I've had that so many times, um, that, like hiring people and yeah. um, I hired the wrong car. person and this was my fuck up because I, I messed up bad there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about when you buy a car. One of the things that I think about is, oh, am I going to get screwed on this deal? I'm going to go buy right. this Corvette and I think it's so sick and I'm going to go home and then someone's going to be like, dude, you got ripped off. You paid 20 grand more than you thought you would. Mm, yeah. So that's, yeah, fuck, I got taken, right? You know, it's not, right. what happened. Mm -hmm. but you know, that's, a, that's an example. A lot of people feel that with, uh, with car stuff too. Um, yeah. fear of failure. God, there's so many fears in this. The fear yeah. of what yeah. happened too. Well, we paid them all this much money. They're taking so long to get it done. It, shit, mm -hmm. it doesn't even work. We wasted a year of our time, X amount of dollars in our thing, you know, fear of failure. What else? Fear of poverty. These people, I don't know if they were going to be I think they were pretty successful. I don't think it was their last 20 grand, but right. if you were to take someone's last 20 grand, which is what I try not to do. I actually, mm -hmm. I put a lot right. of money. This is your last 20 grand. Go make some more money and then give me the 20. Yeah, Jason's grand. really big on that too. Yep. Yeah, because they're going to be your worst clients. They're going to mm -hmm. give you everything. And if you don't succeed, which let's face it, you have, I mean, I don't have a percentage, but let's say you succeed 80% of the time or 90% of the time, yeah. there's 20 or 10% of the people you work with who aren't going to be happy and they're not going to see the results. Right. So. So yeah, man, I don't know. You gotta, yep. you gotta be on point. You gotta be as ethical as possible, which is why I like yeah. what you're saying because you have a clear line of what you won't do. And uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't have that. Um, yeah. I won't sell scammy products. 
I don't mind using doom and gloom. I don't mind using pressure on a call. I, right. I don't. I have no issues with as long as I believe in what I'm selling. The way I like yeah. to um, think about it is, I've got the cure to AIDS. If I don't feel that I've got the cure to AIDS, then uh, I'm not going to try and sell it. I don't even want to write copy for it because I'm not going to. I'm not going to feel good for writing. I feel like I'm stealing. But if yeah. I have cure to AIDS and some dude down the street had AIDS and I sent him a direct mail letter and he was like, eh, I don't know, it's a kind of expensive. I'll be like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Hey, let me call yeah. you up. Hey, man, have you ever considered getting the cure to AIDS? I've got it right here. Well, yeah. okay. If they don't say yes, 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 I would be banging on the door and be like, yo, what are you doing? I got the cure, yeah. right? It's right here. Take it. Um, right. so I don't have, if it's good for them, I don't have any issues pushing them to buy it because most people aren't successful, I, I think, not just because they don't take action, but they don't, it really, like, they, they're scared. They'll take action a little bit. And then, ah, I don't know, I don't, there's self-doubt. It's like the fear of change. There's more of a fear of success yeah. than there is a fear of failure, I think, because you're used to failing. Most of yeah. I failed so many times. I failed more than I've succeeded. Sure, if I, yeah. Super, if I won everything, I wasn't a winner as a little kid. If I was a mm -hmm. winner, a little kid or coming up all the way, it would be a totally different thing, man. Um, yeah. You know, so I don't know if that helps. Pen, Pen <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does. Pen Gillette talks about... Um, how a time that he was proselytized, somebody gave him a Bible and like they knew he was an atheist and they gave him a Bible and he really appreciated that. And they were, they were like opening an honest conversation with him. And he said, look, if you believe, if you truly believe that you're going to heaven, that you have the answer to heaven and a relationship with God and everybody that doesn't have your answer is going to hell, how could you not how could you not? How horrible of a person do you have to be to not share that with everybody that you can, as forcefully as you can, as compellingly as you can? And um, that's a great point. Well, it, it's the same point as the cure for AIDS thing. If you really believe that you have that, then you've got a responsibility to these people. You've got a duty to the people around you to share this to to help them understand. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's worth some forcefulness there. And uh, Carlos writes some pretty forceful copy. <laughs> but he blasts through those fears in that, in that copy. And he really figures out which ones to go after for, for that avatar and that sales page, et cetera, in those emails. I, I think uh, since a lot of your people are, are sales folks, obviously, one of the things that I figured out is when you're, I mean, I would I would consider myself kind of pushy on the phone, but I don't think I come off as pushy. If anything, I come off like more consulting. So if if someone's not ready to get started, I think a lot of folks are just they're scared of asking like the hard question, like mm, uh, yeah, you were really fired up like thirty minutes ago. What happened over the last thirty minutes? Yeah, why don't you have yeah. them tell you? And most people will just let it die out because oh, I don't know what. Just have, if you're gonna, I mean. Cardone has a the great Grant Cardone. I love his little statement of like, if you're gonna lose a deal, lose it on your terms. That's so true. Like at least I do like that. Yeah. At least learn from it. So, and a lot of times when you ask those hard questions, you don't lose the deal. You get it back because you've identified yeah. something that is really bothering them, whatever that common mm -hmm. fear might be, and you bring it out and you say, okay, cool. So that was the big issue. Oh, well, that's no worries, man. Here's actually here's why. But you know. Yeah. Yeah. That helps a ton. That's that's awesome, man. <laughs> well, again. If you like what you're hearing with Carlos here, then go to copypastetemplates.com slash steal of a deal. Copypastetemplates.com slash steal of a deal. Carlos is a great copywriter, and you have heard just how enthusiastic he is about getting this stuff right. And he can get it right for you as well. So we just, um, we love Carlos. We've known him for a while, and we're just so impressed by his starting point, his journey, and and what he's turned himself into here. It's just I so cool to that. have – it's been a pleasure to watch, man. I appreciate that. Thank you guys for having me on the show. We should do it again. You bet. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> we covered a couple things. We have we have a lot more we could dig into if we had the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. This has been Carlos Redlick, uh, head of winning at everything, copywriting, <laughs> on the Sales Call Overhaul Live show. I would like to remind you all – to record your sales calls. Yes. All right. Please free apps, record your free apps sales. Exist calls. to do it. Doesn't have to cost you a penny. Mm -hmm. Listen to them. All right. And if you want our help, submit a recording for our $1,100 free giveaway. 
You can go to facebook.com slash sales call overhaul. That's the page, not the group. Message the page and get instructions there on how to submit your call. And you could get a whole bunch of advice from us on how to improve exactly what you're doing. So our guest next week will be Mike Samuels, copywriter for Clients on Demand, and we hope you'll be there to join us.